Okay, so that was culturally. How about medicine? What's the main thing that you notice is different between the United States and India as far as medicine goes? So the way the practice, uh, the way a doctor practices here in the U.S. and uh, there in India is a bit different. The medical knowledge or the algorithms or protocols which you follow is is the same thing. It's not going to change. All the same? Yeah, they are they are the same. Like how do you diagnose a case of? Uh, Heart failure, it will it will remain the same. It's not going the to change. The same criteria. Yeah, it's you not going to change. Heart that's score, uh, you guys use Centaur, you guys use everything is the same. Yes, that's the same thing. It's not going to change. Well, that's refreshing. But the thing that yeah. changes is how we practice it. So in India, uh, for not I'm not talking about the private hospitals, the big private hospitals, but the majority of the hospitals where you go, doctor uh, doctor have their cabin, mm-hmm. and the patients come in like the uh, patients have to visit the doctor. Mm-hmm. The patient, doctor examines the patient, they take the history, they diagnose, they treat the patient. Yeah. And the patient, uh, now the patient goes, a second patient comes in. So doctor has a cabin and the patient is the one who would come in and get examined and oh, go. Why is that so different here? And here in the US it's completely yeah. opposite. Patients have their own cabin, like there are 10, uh, 10, patient, uh, 10 offices. Yeah. The patient sits there, the doctor yeah. would come The doctor in, goes from patient, patient to patient. To patient. Yeah. Why is it like that? I, I'm not sure, like, but this is the first thing which I realized, like, which I experienced here after coming, like I was amazed. Uh, okay, weird, we, have to visit, we go there, we have to visit the patient in their offices. So that's, that doesn't change how you practice. No. That's just the setup uh, of the practice, which is yeah. very different uh, from back at home in India. That's interesting. Yeah. So for those of you that practice here in the United States, can you imagine that? You just sit in your office with your exam table, your all of your tools, and then the patients are the ones that come in. Yeah. You're not knocking on the door and coming into their room. Yeah. They're coming in to see you. Yeah. So in <laughs> some of the private hospitals, as I said earlier, there are some of the private hospitals, the big private hospitals, they have this system like US where a patient get, gets sure. their own, uh, own office and the doctor goes and visits them. So that is, that is one of the infrastructure or uh, foundational thing yeah. but the the yeah. way doctor practices is the is the same thing there, mm-hmm. there's nothing uh, different in that the way they practice yeah. yeah the availability of the latest techniques like there are uh, these hospitals they have like bleeding as they are uh, doing some research uh, in finding new techniques to treat or to diagnose mm-hmm. The India or any other developing nation, they are like uh, still developing those things. They are not at the bleeding edge of, uh, edge of that. We are just still developing on that. We are just following or we are still exploring all these things. Yeah. US is ahead of everyone right now in the field of healthcare. In the field of surgical management or surgery, Germany or the Europe, they are on the bleeding edge. They are on the top mm-hmm. of there. So every nation has their own benefit or uh, own advantage of being ahead in something. The doctors in uh, India, they can like, they examine up to 100 patients a day. 200? Up to 100 patients wow. a day. In the government setting, if you see, mm-hmm. there, some, pay, some, some practices, they might see even more than that, 150. In one day? In one day. Wow. That, so that's the thing. If you practice in India, if you practice in a government setup, government hospital, mm-hmm. you will be skilled enough that you will be able to see all these patients in, and get the things right. Most of the times, like I would say 95 or 99%, 95% of the times yeah. that you are to the point and you are diagnosing and treating perfectly. So 100 patients a day. Yeah, that happens. If you go to a, a government setting, that, that's, a, yeah. uh, that's how it is. Let me ask you this. Do you document? Yeah, the documentation is the key thing. No matter how many patients you see, you have to do like those doctors, they are fast at everything. Examining, yeah. documentation, history taking, treating, everything. How do you examine make a treatment plan, see, discuss, speak with 200 patients a day, and also document. So uh, that's a skill that develops over time. Nobody on the possible. First, that nobody on the first day would be able to do that. Well, no. And that's a hell, uh, not a single po- uh, doctor is going to do that. That's a team of doctors, like three oh. to four doctors, who will be covering up all these patients in the okay. entire duration. So it's not 200 per doctor. No, no, no. That's no, it's like 40 per doctor. 40 or 50. 50, 50. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm seeing at Urgent Care now, and I'm slow. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. I was about to say 200 is, no. Uh, I've no, heard no. of people doing 90 in a 12-hour shift. 
Oh, okay. Not not 200. But so that's between a team of physicians. Yes. So okay, so you're seeing like 40, 50 sometimes. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's totally believable. I've seen that. I've done that. Oh, and that, that's that I believe. And you still have to document everything. But <laughs> yeah. okay, I was about to say no way. 200. That, that's impossible. <laughs> no, that's impossible. Because in, if an individual is seeing 200 per day, then there are there is a lot of chance that you are getting something wrong. Exactly. Because exactly. You are missing on documentation. You are misdiagnosing or something can get something wrong. wrong. Yeah, because that's, and that's we, we never possible. want to compromise healthcare exactly. at the cost of just for turnover. Yes. Yeah, which a lot of practices do kind of want to do. We call it, we call it a meat grinder. It's like oh. the worst metaphor ever, but it's they call practices that do that. They just want you to see as many as you possibly can, and they don't care about the quality of care. They call that a meat grinder uh, because they just like they want to get people in and out, see and get the money, and they don't I care. Um, and so that people that care about other people's healthcare, the whole reason we're doing this. It's very difficult for folks like that to work in that environment. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's why when I heard two hundred a day, I was like, what? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> two hundred divided by five. Yes, got it. Yes. So forty a day. Yeah. Okay, still a lot, mm -hmm. but yeah. much more manageable. Yeah. Okay, and it's interesting that you said that Germany and I guess the rest of Europe is more on the cutting edge okay. surgically so than we are here. Yes. Also, so uh, two of my like one of my batchmates and one of my seniors they are like they wanted to pursue surgery as a yeah. like uh, residency in surgical field. Mm -hmm. So they were also looking for options and they came up with like uh, Europe like Germany they have the best surgical residency or the surgical future really? and they are yeah they are on the bleeding edge like in the robotic surgeries and the AI Open like AI is just uh, evolving but yeah. uh, regarding robotic surgery they were like keen on getting into robotic surgery so wow. they are pursuing residency like one of them is pursuing a residency one of uh, them is still in a way so yeah that da vinci robot you've heard of that yes is that from germany i'm not sure about that but yeah. i like i got the insight insight about surgical residency being best in germany from these people really i never uh, yeah. searched for the options for surgical residency because mm -hmm. I, I i don't i didn't look forward for surgical residency sure. Sure. so yeah i didn't know that <laughs> i mean i guess it makes sense german engineering yeah. I just, I always thought, you know, as an American, we have the best, but <laughs> uh, obviously not. You know, some so, of the world does yeah. things way better than we do. Yeah. So that's interesting. We definitely have the most expensive, but yes, perhaps yes. they have the best. And that is the reason collaborating in medicine is better for every nation and everyone mm -hmm. around here. For, for the patients, for the doctors, collaboration is the best thing which we can do. Mm -hmm. Like we can expand our knowledge, we can exchange our thoughts, we can exchange our technology and exchange our, extend the way we treat pa yeah. patients. 100%. Yeah. So what would you say is the best here? You said like cardiology training would be the best in the United States. Yes. Why is that? Is that because of the medications we have, because of the institutions, the training? Like, why is it better? And then why is surgery better in, um, in Germany? Um, I, I don't have any good answer for no, that. No, it's so. okay. <laughs> but uh, you, uh, the education in general, I would say in U.S. it has a lot to offer to mm -hmm. people who, are, who want to pursue like future med future in medicine. Mm -hmm. US, has a, U.S. has a good education system yeah. and uh, infrastructure and technology to offer mm -hmm. here in the U.S. for medicine. Okay. Interesting. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the U. I mean, I knew the U.S. especially for uh, for certain specialist degrees, medicine included, mm -hmm. uh, was kind of top of the line. A lot of people yeah. from different countries come here. Yeah. You know, go to any college town, Syracuse included, around the college, you'll see yeah. tons of very expensive vehicles from all the foreign money sending their kids. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, that I'm sure that happens in other countries, too, but it happens here at every single major university. Mm -hmm. So, U.S. education, believe it or not, higher education is still top-notch, yes. you know, world-class. Uh, so, that's good to hear. Oh, yeah. Glad we're doing something right. That's very encouraging. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I guess we're going to skip uh, seven and eight, correct? Um, yeah. We're skipping yeah. those. Okay, sorry, you guys don't get to hear answers to seven and eight. We decided to not discuss these things. Yeah.